drag and drop your map inside your media pool and make sure that under project settings you have 30 frames per second selected, that's what I like. And under image scaling make sure you have center crop no resizing, save that and you're good to go. Now go under your effects tab and search for fusion composition. Drag it inside the timeline and let's make it 10 seconds long. Click on your composition and go inside the fusion tab. Now drag your map inside of the notes box and hit control space to open up this window and search for image plane 3D. Control space on image plane 3D and search for camera 3D. This will create a merge 3D and a camera 3D node. Hit control space on merge 3D and search for a render 3D. And then connect your render 3D to your media out. You can hit number 2 to show your media out in your second viewport and I like to have merge 3D in my first viewport like you see here. As you can see there is nothing in media out screen so that's because the camera is right inside our image plane. So we're gonna pull it back a little bit and now we can have something show up in our media out. One thing I like to do is scale up our image plane 3D to around 5 or 4 so that we don't need to scroll zoom a lot in every time. Then pull back the camera back so we have everything in frame. I'm just gonna adjust the position of camera so something like this. Click on your media in control space and add a normal merge. To that merge we're also gonna add a background and connect those two and to background we're gonna add a polyline because that's what we are going to use to create a path on our map. One thing we need to make sure of is that we have the same resolution on all of our nodes. So for example media out is our 1920 by 1080 but our media in the map size is over 8000 pixels on the white side. Meanwhile our polygon and background is at 1920 by 1080 so we need to make sure that our background and media in is the same size. So I am going to change my background node to the same size as media in. So I like to pull up our map on the first screen and you can see top right corner it says the resolution then I'm gonna hit background and uncheck auto resolution and type in the resolution of our map. Now our background and media in are the same resolution. One thing we're gonna quickly do is click on the polygon node and down here it says right click here for shape animation. We're gonna right click and hit remove polygon polyline. Now I have my polygon selected and I have media in also our map in our first viewpoint and you can see that by those white dots under the node. So yeah polygon node is selected we have the pen tool selected at the top right there and I'm just gonna start drawing a line and I'm just gonna speed this process up because it's not very fun to watch. Now we have created our line all the way from Hamburg to Copenhagen to Stockholm to Oslo and finish in my city Trondheim. Under the polygon node we can change the border width, the thickness of a line and we can change the color of a background by selecting it and going to color and selecting whatever color we want. I'm gonna go for a bright yellow. Now we're going to make the line appear from the starting point and go to the end point. So go to the first frame and keyframe the length under the polygon node. At the first frame we're going to put it at zero, then I'm gonna go forward in time, maybe around 270, something like that. Now actually 240 and complete the length of the line by putting it to one. So now you can see that the line is appearing more and more with each frame passing. Next I'm going to pull up my Merge 3D on the first viewport here by either clicking on this white dot under or hitting one on your keyboard. And I'm just gonna pull the camera down so I can see where the line is starting. Yes, it looks beautiful. So now what we're going to do is animate our camera to follow the line. I'm gonna select the camera and maybe zoom in a little bit. Adjust the position to where you want the camera to start and make sure that you are on frame zero. Under the camera 3D node we're gonna go under transform, right click on translate and animate translate group. We're gonna do the same for the rotation so that we have red diamonds on the right side over here. That means we're ready to keyframe our camera position. I'm gonna move a little bit further in time, maybe to frame 60 and then move my camera so that my line is in the center. I also like to rotate my camera for that cool look. 
like this. Maybe 20 degrees or 30 is enough. Then I'm gonna move even further in time, maybe 120 when we are in Stockholm and I'm gonna move my camera up and increase the rotation on Y axis to 30. Make sure that my the end of the line is in the middle. I'm gonna move even further in time to somewhere when we are in Oslo at around frame 190, 180, 182 and move my camera so that the place is in the center of my screen. I'm gonna move even further to 240 where the, where the line ends and move my camera accordingly. So now you can see that the camera is approximately following our line. Perfect. We ended at the frame 240 but I want a slow zoom in at the end so I'm gonna move to frame 270 and push my camera even more in. Actually, I changed my mind. I want it to be pushing until the end, the frame 290, not 270. So we can go under the keyframes at the top there, select the camera and just move the keyframes we want further back. Close the keyframes and now you see that after we have completed our journey, the camera is slowly pushing in at the end. So it's not just a still image, but there's some movement, so it's not too boring <laughs> and also make sure to save your project so you don't lose it if something goes wrong actually i changed my mind again <laughs> sorry for that and i want it at the end to pull back and reveal the whole route not just the ending point so i'm gonna make my fusion composition a little bit longer five seconds longer adjust that go back to fusion and now you can see we have even more frames here at the ending so I'm just gonna quickly keyframe the translation and rotation to reveal the whole map. First, I'm gonna go one second forward in time and reset my rotation. So it's kind of not zooms all the way out, but a little bit out and changes the rotation. And after that, I'm gonna zoom all the way out. So you can just play around with it. it you don't need to follow this tutorial exactly. Play around with the keyframes until you're happy with the result. So now I'm adjusting my last keyframe where I want my camera to end. And also I like that push slow push in effect at the end. Now we're going to smooth out our keyframes by going to the spline tab at the top. Check off for the camera 3D and select the points and hit the smooth curve at the bottom left there. And do that for all of your keyframes. So I would not recommend just selecting all keyframes and hitting the smooth, smooth them out button, but rather go one by one. Let's go back to the edit page and see how our result looks. I'm gonna make sure that our render cache is either set to smart or user under playback and right click on our fusion, fusion composition, hit render cache fusion output and either select auto or on so that you get a blue line at the top. And you can see it's a very smooth. Our animation looks good. The only thing I don't like is that like small jiggle at the end when it zooms out. And I think the reason for that is I have too many keyframes at the end. So I'm gonna delete a couple and uh, make sure that there is no like jiggly effect. So that's why it's nice to go keyframes one by one and make sure they look good. Next, we're gonna hit on the render 3D node, go under controls, render type and change it to OpenGL renderer because we're gonna create depth of field. Under accumulation effect, check for enable accumulation effect. My computer is not the most powerful in the world, so I'm gonna change the quality to four and amount of blur to 0.02. Go to our camera 3D node and go controls, control visibility and check for focal plane. And I like to set it to around three. And we get this green rectangle on our camera and it basically tells us where the focus is. Go to the first frame and under camera 3D, we can change the focal plane. I like to right click in the viewport and go to camera and change it to top. So I can see where the image plane is and where the focal plane is. For some reason, there is this glitch effect in DaVinci that it doesn't show you the image plane, only focal plane when you go to the top view. So the way I fix it is to show my background in the viewport one and then change it to merge 3D one. And now we can see both. So at the first frame under camera 3D node, we are gonna go to focal plane and hit the diamond button because we're gonna keyframe the focal plane. And what I like to do is go 
every 30 frames, meaning 1 seconds, because we have 30 frames per second timeline, and adjust the focal plane, and do it for the rest of the clip. After you've done that, you can mess around with the quality and amount of blur by going under Render 3D node, and you can increase the blur for a more dramatic effect. I really like it, but then you need to be really precise with the position of the focal plane, because if you are not, maybe what you want to show will not be in focus. And the last thing you can do is add motion blur, but be warned that it's really really heavy on computer and my computer cannot handle checking on this motion blur box. But if you have a really powerful computer, you can do that and you get a really nice effect when the camera moves from one place to another. Uh, you can also smooth out the focal plane under the spline if you want to. I don't find it really necessary, just you can make sure that there are no hard focal, focal plane changes. When you have done everything, you can go and export your map, finally. So go to the deliver page, select MP4, codec 264, resolution 1920 and frame rate 30, and you're good to go. Easy as that. <laughs> I wouldn't say this is an easy tutorial, it's more of a intermediate to advanced, but it's really good to know how to make these types of animations in DaVinci and Fusion, because you can use it for anything, not only maps, because now you know how to create a 3D camera and, and an image plane 3D, so there's endless possibilities that you can try and do. So yeah, this was it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something. Please leave a comment if you understood this tutorial, <laughs> because I would like to improve and your feedback is very important to me. Don't stress if you didn't understood everything from the beginning. It may take a couple of tries and errors, but you'll get there eventually. Yeah, thank you for watching. See you next one. Peace out.